What's up internet, Infinitely Galactic here with another Linux distro review. Today we are looking at the Linux Mint Debian release, April 2012. Alright, so the Linux Mint Debian release has been around for some time now. It has matured nicely, and as you can see here we've got the traditional Welcome to Linux Mint screen where we've got links to all of the uh, all of the things you need to know such as user guides, known problems, new features, tutorials, and all of that fun stuff. So we can close out of that, and you can see here now the desktop is, um, the default desktop for the Linux Mint Debian edition uh, is Mate 1.2. Uh, now Mate, if you're not familiar, which I'm sure most of you are, is basically a GNOME 2 fork. So you get all of the GNOME 2 functionality that, that a lot of users have come to miss. Uh, so having said that, you've got the traditional Mint menu here, uh, which is of course GNOME 2, and this looks very, very similar to the way Linux Mint 11 looked uh, back a, a, year, a year ago now. Now, uh, also, I'd like to note that with some of the applications that used to come with GNOME 2, those applications have also been forked, and now we have uh, Pluma, for example, uh, as the text editor instead of gedit or getit, because getit now is GTK3 as opposed to GTK2. Basically, if you're not familiar with those terms, that just means that the 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 development libraries that are used to compile the programs graphically, uh, they are they are quite outdated now uh, in comparison to the rest of the GNOME desktop. GNOME Desktop is now pretty much all GTK3 uh, along with GNOME 3 and GNOME Shell. Mate 1.2 is very much uh, is, is a directly based off GNOME 2 and therefore all of the development libraries along with that, any applications that want to stay compatible with GNOME 2 also need to be forked. So you can see this is Nautilus, the, the traditional Nautilus that many of us have seen over the years. And as far as pre-installed applications goes, uh, it is based, Linux Mint Debian is of course based on the Debian rolling uh, Debian rolling release. However, they do actually package up their own uh, packages and they roll them out in their own repositories uh, with mirrors all over the world, which is very, very nice. They do have their own security testing and they have update packs as well, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. As you can see, the uh, applications that you get installed by default are just the default applications from Linux Mint releases of, uh, of times gone by. You can see here, instead of I of GNOME, we have the I of Mate. Again, a, a, a forked uh, GNOME application down to GTK2. Under Internet, we We've got most applications you would want or need, including Firefox, Mozilla Thunderbird, and all of that usual stuff. LibreOffice and Dictionary for Office, Banshee and GNOME M Player and VLC for your media playing excellence. And then you have the Compiz Fusion icon if you do want to uh, if you do want to start and use Compiz as your window manager, which you can, by the way. And then under administration, you've got all the Mint tools, which of course have people have grown to love over the years, thrown in also with Gparted and a few other tools there as well. Now, one thing that I am going to note about the Linux Mint Debian Edition, it does perform much faster and with uh, and with much less system resources than what the main edition of Linux Mint does. This is simply because of the uh, the Ubuntu base layer that usually Linux Mint has has been stripped out. So you can see here we're using 300 meg of RAM, which is fairly decent. It's not super lightweight, but compared to uh, uh, regular stock Ubuntu, uh, at least in past releases, not so much with 12.04, uh, but it is uh, it is quite lean, and that's because we have taken out that Ubuntu layer uh, underneath. That uh, Linux Mint is usually based on Ubuntu. This one is based entirely on Debian and their own development, which is very very nice, and it's good to see their independence shining there. Having said that, you do miss some things uh, in the Linux Mint Debian edition that, you're, that you do usually get in the Ubuntu. First of which, uh, Plymouth is not installed by default, so you do not get that nice uh, you don't you don't get that nice boot up screen. You just get a normal uh, console boot up, which is not a big deal really. And also with the uh, notification indicators down the bottom here, for instance, the volume panel, you don't get the media player controls built in, and also then uh, you've got like the stock standard network tool as opposed to all the fancy me menus and power menus and all of that. Also, the notify OSD pop-up bubble does not show up when you uh, when a track changes or whatever. It all goes through the it all goes through the standard GNOME notification system of GNOME 2, which. To be honest, does look quite old and busted by now. So uh, this is just the Mate 1.2 environment. You also get, of course, Cinnamon 1.4, which is really where the spice is at, no pun intended. So let's have a look at that. And here we are with Cinnamon. Now the Cinnamon desktop is a fantastic innovation on behalf of the Mint team in that it doesn't try to use older technologies, but it is trying to embrace the GTK3 and GNOME 3 technologies. As you can see here, we've got the modern up-to-date Nautilus here with the same theming, same icons, but we've taken it into a whole new level with their custom custom GNOME 3 uh, setup. And you can see here that this is uh, this is basically what I believe uh, Linux Mint's future lies in. And if they can keep devel developing this environment at the rate they have been, then it's going to be a fantastic desktop environment.
environment, especially for those who are disgruntled with the whole switch of uh, user paradigm that seems to be going uh, that seems to be going on uh, across the industry, in my opinion. Uh, so we've got a very traditional setup here. We've we've got quick launch access icons on the bottom panel here and you do of course have all of your notifications here for your Wi-Fi wire, wireless networks. You also have your uh, sound menu with integrated sound controls as opposed to the Mate one which does not. You've got your battery indicator and then of course you've got the update manager for Linux Mint. So once you put in your root password of course most of you have seen the update manager of Linux Mint before and you can see that here, here that I'm just checking the repositories but because of the internet uh, because I haven't set up the proxy here, it's going to say that my system is up to date when in fact it is not. But the update manager is very nice and what, one thing that I do very much like about the Linux Mint Debian release is that they do put a lot of attention into the update manager. Because Debian is a rolling release, you are going to be experiencing new packages, you're going to be getting new software all the time. This can get very cumbersome and very slow without a good update manager, which is why I really like to see the update manager here in uh, Linux Mint Debian, and also with the combination of update packs, which are essentially um, meta packages, which contain a whole bunch of updates to your core system uh, in a safe and tested way that is uh, that was introduced by the Linux Mint team uh, as a way to bulk update systems that, are, that have been out of date for a little while. Uh, it's very safe and it's been tested by the Mint team and you have different levels of update packs that you can use if you so wish. You can see here for example with update pack 4 they introduce GNOME 3 uh, with all the GNOME 3 libraries and it gives you it gives you a breakdown of all the frequently asked questions, anything that you could want to know about uh, an update that could potentially mess up your system they will let you know about it and it's very safe and it's very documented and that's what I love about the way that the Linux Mint team are handling their Debian edition. Now back to talking about Cinnamon, you can see here that we have the uh, the Cinnamon settings. If we go, if you just search under the uh, menu here you can come across these Cinnamon settings and you go in there and you can choose the themes and the effects, the applets that you want to put on the panel and all of those fun things as well. So you can see in the menu here also you can right click on an item, you can add it to the panel, add it to the desktop or add it to your favorites just like you could with the old menu. You can change the themes and you can download the themes from a special site that they have set up just for such a thing. You can also set up the hot corners, so if you have more than one window open you can easily switch between the two. You can see here that we've got a very dynamic way to manage the desktops here uh, and as you, can, as you can tell it's very similar to GNOME 3 in that you can add uh, more desktops if you want them dynamically and then you can shift your windows around if you need to. So it's very very nice, we're not skimping here on the functionality at all when it comes to workspaces. In fact it's very reminiscent of OS X uh, line with the way that it handles its workspaces. You can see here with the panel settings I can change the menu icon, I can change the menu hover display, I can change the layout of it, I can put it at the top or at two, one at the top and one at the bottom like uh, traditional GNOME. Uh, so they've really they've really tried to cater to the, to the uh, traditional user here which I love to see. You can also customize the calendar, you can customize effects uh, for the way that the windows open and shut because it does use a different, uh, it does use a different window manager backend uh, animation called uh, Muffin as opposed to Mutter which is the default for GNOME 3. Uh, under applets you can add a whole bunch of fantastic applets here to the panel uh, which again you can get new applets from the Cinnamon site which is great to see because this really restores a lot of functionality to what people are missing with their GNOME panels. Uh, extension Again, uh, extensions do similar things such as uh, bringing this uh, music player functionality into the sound menu and things like that. Then, then the desktop, you can uh, tick and untick whatever items you want there. And the window managers, you can customize where you want the window buttons to be, either on the left or the right hand side. And you've also got the font settings there as well. So it kind of combines a few of the, tw uh, the tools from the GNOME Tweak tool, uh, the default GNOME 3. Uh, tweaker, but it throws them in a nice accessible uh, control panel here that's very easy for new users to access. This is great to see. Overall, I'm very, very impressed with what the Linux Mint team are doing. Uh, Cinnamon has matured nicely in the few months that it's been out, and, uh, and I'm definitely I'm looking forward to seeing Cinnamon on their main release. But as for the Debian edition, uh, it's a very nice way to avoid the Ubuntu camp completely. You still get a vast array of, of software available in the repositories because it does use Debian. Uh, it's very te it's very secure. It's very tested. The Linux, the Linux Mint team do a fantastic job of maintaining this distribution, and I definitely recommend it if you're a desktop user 
are looking for a refuge from all of the desktop craziness that is going on. I give this distribution a solid 4.5 out of 5 simply because you do miss out on some of the, uh, on some of the comfortable features of, of Ubuntu and its derivatives. Having said all that, it's a worthwhile release. This is only the release candidate. The final edition will be coming out very soon. And of course, if you're already running Linux Mint Debian, then you are going to be up to date with the latest stuff if you so wish. But if you want to grab the ISO, you can follow the link in the description below. Keep sending me in suggestions for distro and app reviews. Uh, and also check out the latest Toscast that I did with, uh, with Linux Battery and to TotalOS today. Again, I shall put links in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. And I shall catch you sometime in the future with another showcase of the Linux desktop.